is the police! Get out of the car! Put your hands up! Hi, welcome to Magnum Stories. I'm Kevin Mukherjee. In this episode, we'll take a behind the scenes look at special effects in the movies. You'll meet Dieter Sturm. He blows up things for a living. Things like cars, houses, even people. And he does it safely and legally. See, he works as a special effects coordinator in the movie set. You'll also meet weapons expert Val Kreisman and my good friend, writer Nicholas Puglia. I've been working with these people for years, and thanks to their experience and creativity, I never had any doubt or second thoughts while doing an action scene. I'll trust my own life in their hands. As a matter of fact, I have a number of times. Peter has blown up cars and buildings and people while I was standing only a few feet away, and I was able to walk away without a scratch. Get in the car for a minute. Like happy with the explosion. Should look good in the movie. It took us about two hours of preparation, but it was all worth it. We are planning for it. We planned, we started planning about three months ago, so we knew exactly what to expect. But overall, it was fine. A lot of fire, explosion, looks good. We had two cameras. One camera in the front, which is slow motion, and then we had a regular camera on the side. Actually, what happened is like, when we were getting in the police car, it was in regular action. Then as we started pulling back, the camera started pulling out and it became slow motion. So when the car exploded, it exploded in slow motion. And with the right touch, you put it all together. It should be nice, yeah. How much experience do you have in this line of work? Uh, I started uh, 19 years ago. Uh, I retired a year ago today and kind of came back uh, sort of out of retirement to, to do this. So it's kind of a fun day for me. I first met Michael Stymax back in 1983 when he came in to do the car stunts for a movie that I was directing. Since then, we worked on a number of other movies, and he's truly one of the most gifted and talented and most experienced stuntmen working in the movie business today. What uh, other productions have you been involved in during your uh, career as a stuntman? Uh, I did work on Poseidon Adventure, um, a lot of Dukes of Hazard, Chips, Harry O, uh, uh, Emergency, Adam-12, that kind of thing. This is where we have to do a special effect where a bullet huh? is going to be striking across the bumper and there's going to be a sheen of sparks coming out. And then at the same time, we have a water bag inside here which has what we call a small squib, a small explosive charge, and it will actually burst this bag, and then the water will also disperse. So you'll see a splash of sparks, and momentarily after that, you'll start seeing the water come down. With the high speed behind the car, uh -huh. about 200 feet back, so you get the whole rolling, and have the regular camera on the Mercedes. We do here? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, right there. No smoking around the van. Please. No smoking, please, buddy. Okay. Come. Uh, it's got to be an easier way to make a living, fella. Oh, cool. That's okay. what I tell everybody. Mike, what do you have to do as stunt coordinator? What sorts of things are you involved in? Uh, well, a stunt coordinator is uh, uh, the individual's personally responsible initially for everybody's safety on the set, whether they're uh, uh, actors or stunt people or bystanders. Uh, secondly, it's my job to uh, basically outline the uh, the stunts that are going to be done uh, in this case a car chase um, 
try to pick out better locations than others uh, to get the best uh, effect on film for them. Why are you filming this in Chicago? We like Chicago. The production crew is from Chicago. We think Chicago is a beautiful town. People are nice. We really enjoy mm -hmm. We like Elgin, too. That's one of the reasons we're shooting the climax of the movie in Elgin. Mm -hmm. It's a nice town, and we love it. How did you get familiar with the Elgin area? I live in the suburb of Chicago, and I was ever, and they shot some movies in Elgin before. And mm -hmm. Do you think it's, uh, Elgin is conducive to the kind of chase scenes and car rollovers and things that you've, you've planned? We looked around, we looked at a lot of cities and we really liked Elgin. We liked the buildings, we liked the people, we liked, you know, the location. It's really a nice town. Do I have glasses on, some glasses? No, no I, I didn't. Have to ride a we were barefaced. Huh? I learned how to ride a motorcycle in your park. Uh, yeah, okay, Alan did our, uh, when you say action, shoot towards the station wagon. Right. right. Because at this As time, they're kidnapping the girl, okay? Mm -hmm. So at that time, you blow the front of the van. And you guys are shooting at the back guys. Then we got to see on there and getting shot. <clears throat> Whenever we're loading blanks, we always just need to make sure that we do look inside, that there isn't one a piece of live ammunition there, just for safety precaution. We're all set. Trans Am just starts away very slowly. Comes in, you stand with the Trans Am, Tom gets in the middle, and boom! Trans Am slides. Okay? We uh, are on the set constantly with the weapons. We can't be more than just a short distance away. And in addition, it is more difficult to uh, make uh, automatic weapons function in those sequences. There's more involved in terms of the technical end. The blanks, for example, are specially made by a uh, studio in, in Hollywood specifically for, uh, for those machine guns. And the machine guns themselves are completely reconstructed to function with blanks specifically. Before any filming is made, before the cameras are set up or the crowds come out, it starts with the writing. The first thing is the writing. He may tell me what he wants or just a general idea. He might not know. Sometimes he knows shot by shot what he's looking for. Sometimes it's a rough idea. Sometimes it's just me and a blank sheet of paper. But even though everybody else has the crowds come out and cheer them on and explosions and fireworks and firemen standing by and police telling people to stand back, I still think the writing is the most exciting part. Here's just me, a computer screen, a blank sheet of paper, and anything I can imagine can be. There's no budgets to worry about. No one says, we can't do that, or can we do that, or he'll break his back. But whatever I can dream of, I can put it down on paper. You know, I think the biggest misconception about filmmaking is the time factor. See, so most of the people, they're used to like going to a theater or renting a video or what have you, and they'll watch a movie for an hour and a half or two, but they really do not realize all the hard work and tough things that goes behind the scene. They just see the good aspects of filmmaking. But filmmaking is really probably one of the hardest jobs that you want to that you can get into. Uh, when we were shooting, many times we were shooting for 16, 17, 20 hours days uh, in strange places. So, uh, but, but I guess it's worth it. I really cannot think of doing anything else other than doing filmmaking. So, I really can't complain. Kia matlab? Okay, Sunil, bhai. You're gonna get up, Sunil, eh? Go like this, then look back. You see the fire. You see the fire, then you take a look, and then you run away. Okay. So whenever you are doing stunts, there are a lot of risk involved and one of the things you have to do is plan in such a way so nobody gets hurt. We are there to have a good time and we do want to have a good time, but we don't want to get hurt. We want to do it safely. The thing we did it, we had some model cars of the actual cars we're going to use in the movie and we just started planning, writing down, doing storyboard of the whole whole project. So when you're in location, you knew exactly what to shoot and things went real smoothly. But just like any other game, like football and baseball, you want to play the game, but you want to do it safely, and that's the only way you can win. Fly through an intersection. The bad guy's car will go through, and your car will come by and have what they call a near miss, in other words, as you're coming through the intersection, just as you get through, we'll have another car spinning out Sliding behind, him, behind you. Like he's avoiding hitting the car. Um, we have a, uh, uh, a main car crash, uh, which is to hold the police up so that you guys can get away and get at each other and have your fight. Uh, either a, another car will come in the intersection or a pedestrian will step off the curb or something, causing him to swerve. When he swerves, he'll come up and hit the back of the parked car. 
the car will roll and block the alley. Oh, 